Hey champion guitar players, if you've ever tried to learn and memorize the notes all over the guitar fretboard, you probably started learning the notes, but then maybe forgot some of them a few days later or found it difficult to instantly recall where the notes are on the guitar in the moment you need to find them. Now sure, you can probably figure out where the notes are, but if you cannot yet instantly recall them, it makes learning things like music theory harder. It will make improvising much harder because taking the time to find the notes you need to find slows you down and gets in the way of just playing fluently and freely. So the more our brain is tied up trying to think and remember where the notes are, the harder it is to just freely play and create what we want to express on the guitar. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and before I knew how to instantly recall where the notes are on the guitar, I would find myself being constantly frustrated because learning, playing, and improvising was so much harder than it should have been. But once I learned a much better way to learn and memorize where all the notes are on the fingerboard, everything became easier. I learned everything faster, I could play more freely, and my improvising improved dramatically as a result. Because my mind was finally free to focus on the music and the creative side, and not burdened with simply trying to find notes all over the guitar. Today, I share with you the fastest, best way to learn the notes all over the guitar. I've taught this same stuff to thousands of my online students over many, many, many years, and today it's your turn to get started. So the first and most important thing I want to teach you about how to learn and instantly recall the names on the guitar is that the system that you probably use, it's the system that we all learned of using letter names to identify notes. Like for example, that's the F note, that's the G note, those letter names tell you nothing about the note itself. Let me give you an example. If I ask you the question, what does a C note feel like? What does a C note feel like? You cannot tell me the answer to that question because you don't know it. I also don't know it. Nobody knows it. How could that be? How can no musician tell us what a C note feels like? Well, the answer is simple. A note, any note when played in isolation does not produce a specific definable emotion. What does create the basis or the baseline of emotion is the relationship between whatever given note you're playing, let's say a C note in this example, against a key or a scale or a mode or a chord. So if you play a C note on the guitar, and I play a C major chord, now the C note you're playing has a specific emotion associated with it. It's the relationship between your note and my chord. That relationship creates the basis of the emotion. But if I change chords, you keep playing the C note and I play an A flat note, I'm saying A flat chord, your note feels completely different. It doesn't have the same emotion at all anymore. Same note, totally different feeling, okay? Now if I change chords again and go let's say to an A minor chord or an F major chord and you play the same C note, the emotion changes yet again. So I ask you, if you learn and memorize where all the C notes or all the A flat notes or all the G notes are on the guitar, what good does that really do you? Sure, it tells you where to put your fingers. F is here, C is here. It tells you a little bit about that, but it doesn't help you very much with anything else unless you start adding in your mind other information you might know about music theory. Well, those additional calculations that you have to make in order to make the C note useful to you takes up a lot of time. And if we can eliminate those extra steps and go right to what is the emotional response I'm trying to find on the guitar, you would save your mind a lot of work, you save a lot of time, and you can play much more freely because now you're thinking about the only thing that really matters. 
What is the emotion I want to express in this moment? And where is that emotion on the guitar in the particular musical context over the chord, scale, key, mode, whatever? Where is it? That's what we're trying to do. We don't really care where the F note is. What we care about is where is this particular emotion on the guitar given the key, the scale, the mode, and the chord being played right now. If we know that, we know everything. The next problem with using the letter name system to identify where the notes are on the guitar is that even when you use that system, let's say you learn where C note, the C note is, there's one right there, and then you learn what it feels like over a C chord in the key of C major. Let's say you do that. Great, but as soon as we change chords or we change keys, that information goes away. It doesn't apply anymore. So now you need to learn and memorize what the C note sounds like in all the other major keys and all the other minor keys, and harmonic minor, and melodic minor, and exotic scales, and all of those scales have modes. So there are hundreds of modes, and there are lots of different chords within each of those keys or modes. It is a massive amount of work to try to memorize the notes on the guitar using the letter name system, and then trying to make mental calculations about what is the emotion that an F note or a G note is gonna produce in this particular given musical situation? So let me give you an example here. If I ask, what does the A flat note sound like or feel like in the key of C minor when we play the C minor chord, okay? That's the scenario. You're, you're trying to find out what is the A flat note going to feel like in the key of C minor, when a C minor chord is being played, okay? Now, you may or may not know the answer to that question. If you do know the answer to that question, here's what your brain is having to do. Your brain is having to make mental calculations. You're now having to think to yourself, okay, the A flat note is the flatted sixth note of the C minor key. And because the one chord is being played, the C minor chord, the A flat note would be the flatted sixth over that chord. Now, you might know what emotion that's going to create. I will just give you a hint. It's gonna, it's gonna create the emotion of pain. It's gonna be very painful, especially if you bend up into that note, okay? So flat sixth in a minor key over the one chord generally is associated with emotional pain. Okay, as the baseline emotion. There are things you can do to the note and the chord and rhythm to alter somewhat that bass emotion, but the basis is pain, okay? Pain, suffering. That is flat sixth over a minor chord. Now, what if you now want to play a different note that has a different feeling, okay? You're improvising, you're trying to write a song or a melody, and what if the new note or the new feeling you want to create over that same chord, C minor chord, in the same key, C minor. What if the emotion you want to play is the most lonely, destitute, the most despair? You got one note you can play over the C minor chord. What note would you play? Do you know this information already? Most people don't. They have no idea. But they have to start thinking about it. So what note is it? Three, two, one, too late. We're already on to the next chord. The chord changed, but what if you knew instantly which note function, which note, would give you that emotion on command? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? If you knew exactly which note in that situation is gonna create that emotion, you would have so much creative power to do whatever you wanted musically. I'll give you a hint. The note, or I'll, actually I'll tell you the answer. The note that creates that feeling is the ninth. When you play the ninth over a minor chord, particularly in a minor key, when that chord is one, that will produce the basis of that specific emotion of despair, okay? It's the loneliest note you can play over that chord, okay? And that's true for any key. So, what I just said is, is the most important piece. 
instead of thinking, where is the F note? Where is the D note? Where is whatever note? If you think about the functions of the notes, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment in case you don't know. If you think about the functions of notes, you automatically, once you learn it, will be able to predict in advance what the basis of the emotion of any note is going to be in any given key, mode, or chord. Okay? So, for example, I just told you that the flatted sixth, in a minor key in particular, over the one chord is going to be associated with a feeling of pain. Okay? I also told you that the ninth over a minor chord in a minor key, particularly if it's the one chord, but it's also true to a lesser extent over the four chord, produces a feeling of loss, loneliness, despair, helplessness, hopelessness. That's the ninth will produce that emotion every time. Okay? Now, the, the basis of the emotion. Again, there are things you can do to alter the feel of the emotion. Okay? But the basis of the emotion is that relationship between the note and the chord. Okay? Once you know that, and I just gave you the answers for those two notes, you now know it for every key. So it doesn't matter if we're in C minor or A minor or E minor or G minor. It doesn't matter because the ninth over the one chord in any minor key is going to produce exactly the same feeling every time. If you don't believe me, pick up your guitar and try it. You'll see it for yourself. Okay? The same thing is true with, let's say, the root of a major chord in a major key. So if we're in the key of C and you play a C note over a C chord in the key of C, it's going to feel a certain way, right? It's going to feel a certain way. But if we change keys, let's say we go from the key of C to the key of G, and you play the root of the G chord in the key of G, the feeling is identical to the feeling of the C note over the C chord in the key of C. Why would it, how could that be? Why would it be the same? It's the same because the relationship between the note and the chord in its corresponding key is the same in the key of C as it is in the key of G or the key of A flat or the key of F or B flat or E flat or any other major key. It's always the same. Yeah, it's going to be higher or lower in pitch, but the core basis of the emotion does not change. Why is this important? Why should you care? Why even watch the rest of this video? I'll tell you why. Let's imagine now. We're playing a song. I'm playing some chords for you. You're the lead guitar player or you're the singer. You're going to play a melody or write a melody and provide something. Okay? And if you want to create the feeling that the root note over the major key, the one chord, produces, if I change keys on you and I say, hey, we're going to go from C to E, and you want to create exactly the same feel, all you need to do is play the root of the new key over the same chord, over the one chord, in this case the E chord. Okay? And it will produce reliably the same emotion. So, if we have a scale, let's say a C major scale, what you want to memorize here is where is the root of the scale? Because once you've memorized it for the C major scale, it's exactly the same in the same place in the finger as the G major scale or the A major scale or the B. It doesn't change. Not only is it in the same spot, it produces the same feeling. Now, let's go back to what we talked about at the beginning of this video. When I said to you, what does a C note feel like? And I said, you can't tell me unless there's context. If, once there's context, you can tell me. Okay, you might be able to tell me. But without context, we don't know yet. We don't have enough information yet. That's like saying, if I said to you, who is Mary? Well, I don't know. There's like a million women named Mary. We don't know which one we're talking about. Okay? But once we put it in key, in context, now we know who this person is 
what they're like, what they do, what they look like, what's the personality, etc. Okay, so if you find it hard to memorize the notes on the guitar, and if you find that once you do memorize them, it's not even all that useful because you still have to make all this mental calculation, we want to skip that and learn the functions of notes on the guitar because the function equals the basis of the emotion. Let me say it again because it is super crucial. The function produces the basis of a specific emotion. Okay, so the letter name system is hard to learn because there's so much to memorize. You have to memorize more than just where is the F note. You now have to memorize where, how does the F note work in a particular key. When you use the function system, you only have to memorize one set of functions for the key or for the chords in the key. Not 12 for all 12 keys, one. 12 versus one. Which one do you want to memorize? You want to memorize 12 times as much information or 12 times less information. And the 12 times less information gives you way more power to create emotions on the guitar. So the best way to learn the notes on the guitar is using the function system. We want to know where is the root of all the major keys. So as we shift our scales up and down the guitar, we want to be thinking, where is the root of the scale? Where is the third of the scale? Where is the ninth of the scale? Because it's in the same place relative to the scale fingering in every single key. So there's no difference between C major, G major, A major, E major, B flat major. It's all in the same place and it produces the same emotion in all keys of the same type, okay? So minor keys are different than major keys, of course, but whether we're talking about A minor, E minor, G minor, F sharp minor, the relationships between those minor keys and the notes in those keys do not change. That means we only have to memorize one set of functions and their corresponding emotions, not 12 for all the keys, okay? Now, the thinking process for improvisation or songwriting that I use is function of the notes equals the base of the emotion, okay? So the ninth over a minor chord in a minor key always feels a certain way. The, the baseline feeling is always the same. So I'm using that, but I know what the emotion is because I learn it and then I've memorized that. So now all I have to do, if I want that particular emotion, and we talked about that a few moments ago, what that specific emotion is for the ninth over a minor chord, I can go right to it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about, okay, what key am I in? Uh, where is the ninth of this key? And that, that's we're in the key of F, so the ninth is G. I don't have to do that and neither do you. You've got your scale patterns, you learn where the ninth is, and then you can instantly move to that emotion anytime you want. There is so much power. I'm hoping that you can see how much, I mean, you can shave years and years of musical experience and the learning process by just going straight to what matters. Function equals the basis of the emotion. In other words, Understanding where the functions of the notes are on the guitar gives you freedom, freedom of expression. It, bur it unburdens your mind from having to do all these calculations and thinkings of what notes are in what keys and what note am I on now and how does that relate to the key. You can skip all of that and get right to what matters, creating the exact feel that you want to create when you want to create it. Think about this. What is our goal? What is your goal as a guitar player, as a musician? I think for most of us, our goal is to express specific emotions that we want to express, whatever that might be for you. Why use a system that doesn't tell you what the emotions are and where they can be found? Why use such a system? Why not use the function system instead? because it has 100% predictability 
that the emotion will always be the same, the, the basis of the emotion. And then once you have that basis, you know exactly where to find it. Then through rhythm and phrasing and some other musical elements, you can alter that emotion to a certain extent. You can't find, you can't create its opposite by doing that, but you can make it a little darker, a little lighter, a little brighter, a little more intense, a little less intense. You can make variations on the base emotion, just like if you had a color. Let's say you have the color red. If you add white, red becomes more like pink. If you add a little black, it becomes a little darker, like maroon. If you add a little blue, it starts shifting more towards purple. If you add a little yellow, it's red, but now it's shifting a little bit more towards orange. Red is still the basis in this example, but you can shift it a little bit towards the orange side of the spectrum, a little bit towards the purple side of the spectrum, a little bit more towards maroon, a little bit more towards uh, pink. You can do whatever you want, because now through phrasing and timing and other things, you can shade the red emotion. But if you don't even know where the red emotion is on the guitar, you might be shading things, but it's all arbitrary. It's all you know trial and error. The problem with trial and error is all the error. We wanna skip right to, we wanna skip that stuff and get to expressing ourselves freely. So whenever I teach the function system or talk about it, people often misunderstand what I'm talking about. I am not referring to intervals between arbitrary notes, okay? So when I talk about, let's say, the seventh, the function of the seventh, I mean the seventh as it relates to either the root of the key, the root of the chord, or the root of the mode. I don't mean the interval, the distance of a seventh between any other notes in the key or the chord, okay? So that's an important distinction because intervals of a seventh or intervals of a third do not produce the same emotion all the time. In fact, they're gonna produce different emotions depending upon the starting point, the bottom of the interval basically, okay? It's the function, the, a note against the root of the key, the mode, or the chord. That is where the reliability of the emotion can be identified and used, not the interval of a seventh between any arbitrary point. Because if you do it a seventh from the root, that's going to feel different than doing a seventh from the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. Okay, So that's really important. And then people often misunderstand that. I want to make sure that's clarified. So the next thing I want to talk about is why do people still use the letter name system? Why, why aren't we all taught the function system from the beginning? Well, there are some reasons and I'll tell you what they are. First is just tradition, okay? For long time, centuries and centuries, note names, letter names have been the thing that you see when you look at music notation. They're identified by their letter name not their function name, okay, not, or not their function. So you have to do a mental calculation to figure out what the function is. But typically when music is taught, we're taught, you know, where the G chord is or where the A note is. And then you learn about functions much later. I think that whole system is upside down and backwards and ridiculous, but that, that is what it is what it is. That's the system we have, okay, traditionally, okay. Now, since most players don't know the function system, it's easier to communicate with another musician and just say, hey, play the G note. So if you're playing with a friend of yours and your friend doesn't understand that G is the ninth in the key of F, or if they gotta sit there and think about it, to save time, you just might tell him or her, just play G. I'm talking about G right there. Okay? And then they know what to play and they're playing the right note without having to make a bunch of calculations that they haven't yet learned. So if you want to play freely, you've got to learn the note functions on the guitar, not just the names of the notes on the guitar or on the fretboard. Okay? So one other thing that people often ask me is, when I talk about functions, they'll ask, do you mean the function of a note against the key? that we're in? Or do you mean the note function over the chord? Which one am I thinking about? Well, the answer is both. Okay, so let's say we're in the key of C major and currently a G chord is being played. 
okay? G would be the five chord in the key of C, okay? So we've got the key of C, but the current chord being played is G, all right? And now let's say we're gonna play a D note, all right? When we wanna know what is the, what's the emotion that's gonna be created from playing the D note in the key of C, but currently over a G chord, am I thinking about D in relation to the key? It would be the second or the ninth of the key, but it's also the fifth of the G chord. Am I thinking about the D note as the fifth of the G chord, or am I thinking about the D note as the ninth of the C major key? The answer is I'm thinking about both. Why would I think about both? Because you have two relationships happening there simultaneously that's creating the emotion that you and I experience when we hear the D note being played in that context. On the micro level, we're hearing the D as the fifth note of the G chord, and that's producing a particular feeling in you and in me. But on the macro level, our brain remembers, it holds, even if you don't know anything about music theory, your brain intuitively understands we're in the key of C and G is not the one chord. Something else, in this case, the C chord, is the one chord. So our brain is holding the key of C in our minds, even though a G chord is being played right now. It's holding this and it's comparing the D to the key and the D to the G chord. Now, you don't have to know about music theory to do this. In fact, you don't have to be a musician at all. Everyone who is not completely tone deaf does this intuitively. They don't know how to identify it. They may not know what chord we're in, what key we're in, what the notes are. They can't tell you anything about what they're hearing, but their brain is doing this. How do we know that their brains are doing this? Well, if they like music, it's happening because if they couldn't hear that, they would have a very hard time enjoying music or even distinguishing between different feelings within songs that they like, okay? So we as musicians wanna be thinking about both. D in relation to the key, it's the ninth, and D in relation to the G chord, the five, the fifth of the five chord in the key. All right, so, so far we've talked about why the learning the function of notes in, on the guitar is better than and gives you way more information and freedom and power than learning where the notes are on the fingerboard. But I have not yet taught anything about how do you learn this stuff? How do you practice it? What do you do? Okay, so let me give you a very simple exercise that you can do on your own. Okay, and if you want more help with this, you know, with lessons or whatever, contact me, I'm happy to help you. But if you wanna get started by yourself, here's what I'm gonna suggest. Take a piece of paper and write out for yourself either a minor scale or a major scale, any scale you want, one scale, just one, and one position. So let's say I'm gonna write out an A major scale, okay? I'm just gonna write out the fingering, okay? It doesn't matter if it's A major or G major because all the keys are gonna be the same fingering. Okay. Now, you want to write that same scale out seven times, seven times, okay? Not one time, it's got to be seven times, okay? And you want to identify within the major scale fingering, okay, where is the root note of the one chord, okay? You want to indicate on your on your scale, just circle where all the root notes are, put a little R there or a one to indicate the root. Where is now the fifth of the one chord in this fingering? You write that down. Here's five, okay, all the fives in this fingering. You do the same for all the notes, the second, the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc. So that will tell you in this major scale fingering where the functions are for the one chord in a major key, okay? Now, right now, we're not gonna worry about scale fingerings down here or up here. We're just talking about one scale fingering at a time, okay? Just start with one at a time, okay? Now, so you do that for the first time you write it out. The second time that you write this out, you do the same thing 
for the two chord, okay? So in this example, A major, the two chord would be a B minor chord, okay? Don't worry about B, we don't need to know the letter names. Why? Because when we change keys, it's all gonna be in the same spot relative to the fingering, okay? So now you wanna write out what would be the root of the two chord? The root of the, I'm sorry, the, the second of the two chord, the third of the two chord, the, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, okay? The fingering won't change. It's the same fingering, same notes. They're in the same place. Nothing changes in the fingering. The only thing that changes is when the one chord is what we're referencing, that's the root of the one chord. But when the two chord, when we're trying to compare the notes of the scale fingering to the two chord, that's not the root anymore. That's the seventh. The root is right here on this note. There's the ninth, right? There's the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, etc. When you write it the scale out the third time, you do it for the three chord. Okay? So the root would be here. One, two, three. There's the root of the three chord. That would be the seventh. That would be the sixth, etc. So you do this for all seven chords of the key, of, of a major key. Now, once you've memorized that for one major key, you have it in immediately and instantly memorized for all major keys, okay? You don't have to do this 12 different times for each key. You only have to do it once because everything will be in the same. If you move the whole thing down, everything's in the same place relative to the fingering, okay? So within the fingering, if you remember what that is, if we change keys down to F, it's in the same spot, same finger in the same place relative to the fingering, okay? So that is the place to begin, just identifying the functions. So instead of thinking about C sharp or A, think about three or two or one or seven, okay? That would be step one. It's a fairly big step. Step two is learning to identify the emotion of each note relative to the chord of the key. Now again, you only you have to do this seven times because there are seven chords, seven Roman numerals, seven chords within a major key. But you only have to do it for one of the major keys, not all 12, because once you got it for one, you've got it for all of them. Why? Because we're using the function names, not letter names. As soon as you move to letter names, you've got 12 times the amount of work to do. If you use functions for the notes and for the chords, the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, you only have to do this once. And that's it for the major keys. And then for the minor keys, you would do it once for them. And that's how you get this done. It will take some time, okay? And there are, there are ways that you can make this go a whole lot faster. But if you wanna try this on your own, that's the place to start. Now, if you sometimes struggle to instantly recall where the notes, the scales, the chords, or the arpeggios are on the fretboard, you can download my Fretboard Freedom Blueprint and discover nearly effortless ways to visualize scales on the guitar, okay? It's a short, fast, easy read, and yes, it's completely free. Download it from the link below.